Check it out, in this video I'm going to be going over the block printing process of making your own stamp. I picked up this little speed ball set. Seems to have everything I'll need. Let's break into it and see what we got. It's been a while since I've actually block printed. Did some in school a while back, but never actually picked up anything to make it my own at home. So let's see what we have in here. So first off we got some general instructions from Speedball. I know the foundations and I'll be describing them here. Then we just got a generic cutting tool. Taking the back off here, looks like it comes with three different blade sizes so we'll be able to clear some bigger areas with some of these larger ones and get some finer detail with other ones. Got a 4x6 block here which will be a good size. I'm planning to make the print for a 4x6 sticker as well so this will work. And then it came with a little bit of acrylic paint and a roller to actually apply that paint on. So everything we seemingly need to get started. I've got my design here. So I'll be pretty much using the entire size of this block. I think I'm gonna go after a throw up on this. It'll be a little bit higher detail stuff and I'll be able to you know, kind of mass produce it. So let's sketch out an area and see what we got. Might as well just trace the outside edge of this block to get an idea. Make sure our design will fit inside that area. Making sure that these lines are pretty dark with that graphite will allow us to actually then kind of stamp on the first pass of this and that'll give us somewhat of an area to then trace around and then we can you know, obviously redraw it with everything. So I want to reiterate when you're transferring your design to the block, trace your design as if you want to see it. When you then transfer it to the block it might look backwards but once you cut it and then reapply paint to it it's going to reprint exactly as you see it on your page to start. So simply trace the outline that you want to print and then rub it onto the back side of your block. Gonna lay the block down right on top of it and use the roller to press in the pencil onto the back side. Cool, that's a good print. Now I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of Sharpie just so it doesn't smudge and rub off too much while I'm cutting. All right, so now I've finished the process of actually outlining everything once and for all. I now I'm gonna cut away every area that's pink. I want my print to actually have the same layer as this black section. So I'm gonna cut away all the pink, and that'll leave a positive rendition of my image, and then we can actually start printing this. So I'm gonna start with probably my largest sizes. So to set up the tool, you can simply just loosen it up, and then there's a slot in the top where your cutter just slides right in. Place that in and then tighten it back down. Now these are pretty sharp and they can slip and gouge you, so make sure you're always cutting away and you don't have your hand anywhere beyond where your cut is actually going. Slipping and nicking yourself is definitely pretty painful and I've done it before, so don't recommend that at all. I'm going to start with the largest one, like I said, and just really starting by clearing out some of these large sections to get them out of the way. So I've pretty much finished the first pass of everything and then I'm gonna go back in with the medium tip and try to clean up all these kind of intersecting points. Make sure that you know all my cutbacks are extra thin and all the areas where two lines meet, they fit and they're nice small so that it prints well. And it's easy to do that going from one side and then coming from the other to kind of create a V cut into that corner. That'll let you get a really tight hit right on where the lines meet and let you get into that corner as best you can. I don't think I really need the extra area around the rectangle, so I'm actually going to cut it out. I think that'll make it easier to align as well, because you'll have a better outline of where your actual design is. Alright, so I just grabbed a piece of plastic from some packaging that I'm going to actually use to roll out the paint on. So just do a little dab there. And this will let you spread that paint out and get a nice you know, deposit here on the roller. So you can see it's a pretty smooth application here on the roller, that's good, it's not going to let you know, too many strange uh, features happen when you do press it on top of here. So now let's do it for the stamp. And you just want to lightly roll across the top, keeping your pressure super even so you're only hitting the top surfaces. If you kind of 
tilt the roller at all, you might catch some of these areas down here and put ink on you know, other parts. And then if you need more, just come back over, swipe a few times on your paint, and keep going. And now too, you'll be able to see kind of how sharp your edges are and if any areas need to be cleaned up. But let's give this first test run. So I'm just going to flip it over and lay it down. Some good pressure all around it. Some people even actually use a second roller and roll it across the top. I only have the one, so we'll do it just with our hand. And peel it out. So it looks like we could use a teeny bit more pressure on there. But it's a pretty good print for the first round. I'm using a really soft amount of pressure here. I don't want to push down too hard because I you know, don't want to get ink in the wrong spots, but I also don't want to you know, force the ink onto it and then pick it right back up with the roller. So let's try the reverse of this actually. Put the sticker down on it and maybe press this in. There we have it. Pretty good print. So you can see what a little bit too much pressure leads to. It kind of blows out the ink, gives it a little bit of a sloppy look. So pushing down with both hands and all my weight, definitely not the, the best move on this part. Even had enough ink left over to get a print out of the second one. Since I got the plastic in the way, I can try that roller technique. Just on the back side. See how that works out. Pretty good print. Some better results in some cases, and then a little sloppy around the dots of the E. You know, not only was this an interest of this was do it for the stickers, but also put it on the back of some envelopes. So I don't even mind kind of that spotty look to it. It kind of gives a natural kind of weird look to the print and lets you get some, you know, areas like the E's and the bit of the S that was picking up a little bit more ink than I'd like. Let's those areas flex a little bit more and get the kind of smaller details in there. So I think the ink and the amount of paint I'm actually using per print is going to kind of come with time and tailoring that in and understanding you know, exactly what you're printing on as well. My guess is I'm going to be able to get about five prints with every ink deposit given that uh, you know I don't have a perfectly black ink on every one. But I think I'm okay with that right now. So let's see if we can get five prints out of just one setting of the ink. So we're definitely losing ink as we go. I don't think I'll get five, maybe just four out of each. But now that I'm definitely lower on ink, I can add a little bit more pressure and still get some clean lines. 
that's probably the lightest and faintest I would ever like. Maybe not even. So stick with maybe about three. So this is a follow up after I've been printing a little bit with the block printing stuff. I found that too much ink actually creates somewhat of a overdrawn and bleeded out image. It presses the ink a little bit too far. So you want to make sure you have a little subtle amount of ink on here. Spread it out so you can barely even see that that surface is glistening. You can see there's not much on my roller at all. And then just slightly glide it over top. And then aligning your workpiece and your stencil, place that down. And I'm going to first do it with just my hands to show you that. And then a second great method is to actually use a book or something totally solid to press down on the back. So here I'm adding equal pressure all around, and then I know these larger sections where my 3D is around the bottom and then this right side. I know those have, you know, a lot more information and a lot more ink that needs to make contact. So make sure to kind of double those up as well, and then peel the image up. You can see that it's a much more consistent black. I might have missed a little bit of pressure on the bottom section of the V, but these are super smooth lines. Even a close up you can see there's not much bleed out and the super small sections, you're getting the detail in there very nicely. So, so now let's jump into the little book method. Now prep's all the same, not a ton of ink here, you're not going to see any big glistening spots. Evenly glide over top of everything to get your ink set up, get your work piece in place. And I will say I probably should have left some more space around the edges to hold where the ink is not. But, you know, hindsight's great. Now getting a book or something flat, place it over top of the entire image, and then press down on that. And what that's gonna do is distribute your pressure a little bit more evenly, and allow you to press down a little bit stronger, too, without having fear of shifting or kind of screwing things up. See how even that print is. Very comparable. See, I might not be able to get a lot of ink down in that V section again, which might just be ironic, but once again, super clean print. Really happy with all the small details in there. And you know, this is a, kind of a derivative of putting a bigger block on the back of here. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that as I don't really have any scrap wood lying around, but that's what you can do. You can add a big kind of smooth plane on the back like a piece of wood and use that to press down and that'll give you the same effect as some large kind of uniform object. So a quick anecdote, I hope that helps clear things up as well as gives me a little bit uh, further down the road experience and that way I'm not giving you really, really entry level suggestions on something I haven't had a ton of time with. This is after printing, you know, almost a hundred of these, gotten my technique down to have some really smooth applications. So I'm definitely happy with the turnout of this. I'm going to be able to, you know, mass produce these pretty much and whether it takes 10 seconds to make one, now that I've got the stamp made I can pretty much use it on a ton of different surfaces. I don't know that I'll stick with that kind of water-based ink that originally came with it. Not probably very durable much at all. So maybe go get some Rust-Oleum enamel or something like that to use on my stickers and whatnot to give it a little bit more durability. As well as, you know, the quick applications like this on the envelope allows you to print on some different materials. I know, you know, I wouldn't be willing to draw throw you on every envelope I send out, but this would be a good way to share my art on the outside of the package and give it a little bit of a unique look. The kit altogether was like 20 bucks at Hobby Lobby, so definitely check that out. It had everything you needed. I probably wouldn't go less. I was thinking about doing like an ink stamp where you put it in the ink tray, like a normal small stamp, but I kind of like the roller a little bit better. It'll let you kind of evenly do it. And much of the ink stamp kind of basins I saw weren't that big, and the big ones were running 20 bucks in itself, so I wasn't that interested in jumping on something like that. Still pretty versatile with the, the little roller. And, you know, I'm excited to try this with some different colors and even some different paints down the road. So, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button as well as consider joining the crew by subscribing. I post videos almost every week about something in the art process, me creating something like this, doing a tutorial, or reviewing some products. So be sure to check out some of the other content on the channel. And I'll leave some links for similar products online if you don't have a store nearby. I know most arts and craft stores will have kits around the same price have all the simple tools you need. It seemed like the linoleum or the kind of the rubber blocks were the most expensive part. If you were to rebuy these, I think they came out to like six or eight bucks. So that's a bigger commitment as you know down the road goes, but definitely happy with for 20 bucks, gonna get a lot of prints out of this. So excited to try this out on some more things. Feel free to always share the stuff with me on Instagram or here on YouTube if you do try out the process. Since this is just water soluble ink, I'm gonna go run this in the sink and let's clean them off.